All right, welcome back to Hot Topics TV, y'all. Y'all already know what the topic is hot. We are on it. Now, 42 Doug, he's been in custody for quite some time now, but it all happened just not too long ago, right? We're talking about around May of this year, 2022. I think somebody got into 42 Doug's head and had him feeling like he was sovereign. He was a sovereign citizen and he was immune to federal laws. Let me tell you something. For all the people out there who follow these teachings of these people who are telling you that you are a sovereign citizen and you are immune to federal laws, etc., etc., stop it. Stop it. Everybody is bad. Everybody is gangster. Everybody is immune to federal laws. Everybody is untouchable until the feds come, until the feds sink their hooks in you. And then you realize that you're just another inmate sitting in a facility somewhere waiting to be processed like meat at a meat plant. Troubled Detroit rapper 42 Doug claimed that he was a sovereign citizen and he was immune to federal laws. Now, I'm getting this straight from the Detroit news. He said that he was worth $11 million. Now, I, I haven't even heard one song from 42 Doug, but he claimed that he was worth $11 million and he got this money from doing shows and selling music. Well, I'm not into every artist, so he might have been one of the artists that I'm not into. Therefore, he got rich and wealthy without me even seeing or knowing that he existed. However, the story goes like this. He claimed that he was a sovereign citizen. He was immune to federal laws and said he was worth about $11 million. And also, they found out that he had help hiding from the feds, from agents, during a multi-state manhunt this is what the prosecutors said. Federal records, recorded jailhouse phone calls, courtroom testimony during 42 Doug's failed attempt to get bond on Thursday provided an insider's view of this week-long manhunt that involved a secret spy gadget, piles of cash, drugs, and a rapper on the run. Oh boy. So, the rapper's real name is Dion Hayes. He was the target of a long, drawn out federal search for failing to report. Last month, he was supposed to report to a federal prison camp in West Virginia just to serve a six-month sentence for illegally possessing a firearm. He looks like a baby in his face. You would think he's about 18, 19. And I say 18, 19 because I have a child that is that age. So to me, he's a kid. He's actually 27 years old. About to be 28. So that's pushing up on 30. He's a grown-ass man. Okay, he was arrested on Wednesday after flying to Willow Run Airport aboard a private jet from Memphis, where he attended a NBA playoff game between Memphis Grizzlies and the Golden State Warriors. Now, he's doing all this flying private jet, attending NBA playoff games, sitting front row while he is wanted by the feds and it's supposed to turn himself in and he did not bureau of alcohol tobacco firearms and explosive agents were monitoring his movements after obtaining a search warrant which allowed them to track the location of his cell phone i told y'all before man when the feds come for you it is it's not much that you can do Maybe you can uh, go off to one of those countries that has no extradition orders, uh, rights with the U.S. Like if you get away and you're over there, then you're going to have to stay there. Because if you travel and you end up in a country that does have extradition treaty or extradition dealings with the U.S., there might be agents in those countries, those neighboring countries that are waiting to get you. So you got to stay where you're at. Now, the 
Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive Agents were monitoring his movements after getting a search warrant, which allowed them to track the location of his cell phone. We in 2022, y'all. Modern days and modern times. It is so easy to track you. They caught him at approximately 4.45 a.m. early morning on a Wednesday morning, even though his name was left off of the flight passenger manifest. And they found the rapper with enough money and jewelry to pay for a flight from justice to run away, to get ghost. They said he had enough cash on him to get ghost. To be gone. They know he's getting help. Because it's a private jet. And his name was not even on the manifesto. You know when you board the plane. Wherever you board a plane at. You're going to have a ticket. You're going to have your name on the travel list. Who's booked for this flight? His name wasn't even on there. And they still got him. Now, when he was arrested, he had $25,000 in cash and more than $100,000 in jewelry, Assistant U.S. Attorney Barbara Lanning said. $25,000 in cash. There's a lot of people around here that don't have $25,000 saved up as life savings. He has $25,000 in cash on him. On the run. It's expensive to be on the run. I've heard people who were on the run say that. I ain't never been on a run, so I don't know. But I would imagine so, because you got to keep moving hotel to hotel. You got to pay people to act like they didn't see you. You got to pay somebody to stash you up over here, pay somebody to go get you food and lay low and all this other stuff. So I would imagine so. The arrests represents worsening legal problems for the entertainer whose career has soared during the pandemic this is where he came to prominence at during the pandemic despite a series of arrests and criminal charges now instead of six months in, in a prison camp he now faces up to five years in a federal prison if convicted of failing to surrender last month stupid I'm watching this video and I seen this dude, the judge said, I sentenced you to six months and homie said, I'm not ready. And re he said, I'm not ready. I think it's on court TV. I'm not ready and ran, <laughs> ran out of the courtroom and his girlfriend walked out behind him and the belt of his following behind him, trying to get him to come back in the courtroom, make him understand, yo man, go do your little six months and then Take this off of your, I'm not ready. And he runs, runs out of the courtroom, makes his way all the way out the building, jumps in a car, drives down the street, full speed ahead, crashes into a vehicle that has a couple in it, a married couple in it, and their young baby. Totals the people's vehicle. What kind of charge do you think he's looking at now? Years behind bars. Same situation for 42 Doug. Now his problems are worse than they were before. Could have went to the camp, did his little six months, do some push-ups and sit-ups, came out in physically fit condition, enough to be able to take his shirt off on stage on tour and have a few little honeys going, ah, he's so sexy. But he wasn't thinking far ahead. And because he didn't want to do them little six months, now he's going to go to actual prison. It was boys camp he was about to go to. Now, Hayes' rap sheet dates back to 2010. He's been getting in trouble. He was convicted of carjacking and felony firearms possession in 2010. So he's a felon. He was released from prison five years ago. Mind you, this man's 27 years old, right? And then he started a dramatic rise within the rap industry. 
Now, here's the thing about the rap industry. They give these big contracts to people who've been in trouble. It's almost like a prerequisite. You have to have a criminal background and you must have been locked up before, whether it's juvenile or adult prison before. And then you got to be affiliated and associated with gangs and live like a dangerous life. And then these record companies give you a big contract. So, and we've talked about this before. So it's no surprise that he got out of prison after he was convicted and did time in prison for stuff like carjacking and, you know, using a firearm in the committing of this crime. Hayes is a protege of the rapper Yo Gotti. And he collaborated with Lil Baby on tracks like We Paid and Grace. His mixtape was called Freedom Boys. It debuted in May of 2021 at number 8 on the Billboard 200. And it sold 32,000 units. And he released the mixtape Last Ones Left a couple of months ago. His recent legal problems can be traced to November of 2019. That's when ATF agents received a tip that he had fired a weapon inside stuttered range and guns in Atlanta. Investigators reviewed video surveillance and a document from the gun range and learned that Hayes and two others had actually visited the range on November 8th. The surveillance video shows Hayes possessing, loading, and firing a 9mm Glock pistol according to a criminal complaint. Now, you're saying, man, he's in a safe environment. He's firing a weapon. You know, he knows how to handle it. He's taking his training very well. He wants to be an expert marksman, gunman, shooter. He was arrested. In March of 2020 and charged with felony firearm possession remember he had done time before for carjacking with a weapon so he wasn't supposed to be in possession of a weapon somebody snitched on him somebody sent that footage to the feds somebody said he was in there in a firing range firing a gun and he got a criminal record and that's when his problem started. And then he was supposed to report to the camp to do a little six-month bid. And he ran. And now he's looking at years. So he was arrested March of 2020 and charged with felony firearm possession. Now, while free on bond in Georgia in a gun case, he settled into an Atlanta suburb, you know, a rich people neighborhood. And he actually purchased a $1.4 million, 6,500 square foot home. This is according to public records. So the boy had his money. He's not broke by far. He purchased this property, $1.4 million, 6,500 square foot home. He was sentenced in November to three years of probation and ordered to pay a $90,000 fine for illegal possession of firearm. But after repeatedly testing positive for opiates, because he's on drugs, and getting arrested in Las Vegas for obstructing law enforcement, he was out here wilding. The judge sentenced him to that six months in the federal prison camp. For those of you, this is a complete walk down of how 42 Doug got to where he's at. So, he failed to report to the camp in Welch, West Virginia, and he was supposed to report there on April 12th. He appealed and then mistakenly believed that he would not have to report to prison while that case was pending. This is what his lawyer said. It was a mistake. He mistakenly believed. That is why you've seen him go into all these fancy um playoff games, flying private jet style, but why were they making an effort to hide his name on a manifest and all this other stuff? Anyways, his attorney says, um, yeah, it was a mistake, judge. He thought, honestly, that he didn't have to show as long as the case was open and going. So on April of 
April 29th of 2022, prosecutors said that he filed paperwork in a federal court in Georgia claiming that he was not subject to federal laws because he is a sovereign citizen. And the house that he had was nice. I mean, it's a mansion by any means. In effect, after he filed them paperwork talking about he didn't have to do nothing because he to subject himself to federal laws because he is a sovereign citizen. In effect, communicating he would not be reporting to any Bureau of Prisons facility. <laughs> now, despite the claims of wealth and cash, investigators found that Hayes was represented Thursday by a free court-appointed lawyer, Casey Swanson. Swanson disputed and said that Hayes wasn't the one that sent that letter. Mr. Hayes did not flee, she said. He did not intentionally avoid a sentence in this case. Let's get this straight. Wherever that money comes from for that $1.4 million home he was in, I'm guessing it came from the record company that he assigned to. I'm guessing it came from those people. And usually, they'll put these rappers up in these big houses, right? But that property belongs to the company, not to the rapper. So they can tell that rapper at any time, hey, you have six months to move out. And they can move another rapper in, sign another rapper to a fat contract, give him a big advance, and wait for him to go to prison as well. Because you know what I'm saying, they only sign these types of people. You got a prison record, you've proven that you can do some violent crimes, you down with the shits, and all that. So, hey, you deserve this money. But we got a big contract, we have a big insurance on your head. So when you go to prison... Or when you die, we get paid. And, and, and the ball keeps moving. How do you end up with a free court-appointed lawyer? That's like the worst attorney you could have. And I'm not saying nothing against the people who work as free court-appointed lawyers. But when you're trying to fight a case and you're looking at six months versus five years, the last thing you want is a free court-appointed lawyer. Anyways, after the letter was filed in court, Hayes managed to elude deputy U.S. marshals and ATF agents despite maintaining a constant presence, even in the media. For his 2.1 million followers on Instagram and more than 335,000 followers on Twitter, he was always in touch with them, always dropping location. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Balling out of control. Blah, blah, blah. He's not, he's on social media. His lawyer even used that in court. And his lawyer said, listen, he's on social media all the time. He's not hiding. He's going around in public. ATF agents could not find him in Atlanta, which is where he was supposed to be. We didn't know where Mr. Hayes was since April 28th. An ATF agent called Brett Brandon said in court. Federal agents obtained court possession or court permission to ping Hayes' phone to reveal his location on April 28th. Now, now y'all know, right, that they can obtain permission from the courts to ping your damn phone and get your location. Now y'all know, if you didn't know before. I think they do that anyways. On April 28th, but ATF agents did not start seeing results from pinging his phone until a few days later. Investigators conducted a surveillance at about seven addresses in the metro Detroit area, but they never saw Hayes. Damn, they were after him. Seven different addresses. Now, earlier during that week that they got him, agents said that a signal to his phone had discovered that he was in Memphis. Yo, Gotti is from Memphis. He was in Memphis and they tracked his return from Memphis to Willow Run Airport West in Detroit early that Wednesday. Investigators had airport security detain Hayes until they arrived. Agents soon discovered that the private jet did not have an assigned flight number even. 
Agents asked airport security to confirm that Hayes was on the flight. They checked the manifest and Hayes was not listed among the passengers. All right, so once the passengers exited the plane, they got off the plane, security identified him, placed his phone on a table until the ATF agents could review the device and had the rapper wait in the lobby. I, I'm sure he knew right then that he was caught. They found his bodyguard in the parking lot. His bodyguard left him. They found his bodyguard in the parking lot. He had two extended magazine Glock firearms with 30 round capacity magazines on him. I mean, this brother, yo, 42 Doug is really with the shits. He's flying private jet. He snuck on a private jet. His he paid somebody to keep his name off the manifest. Even though the feds was tracking his phone because they pinged him and they found his location, tracked him from Memphis. And when they got him, he had two extended magazines, Glock firearms with 30 round capacity magazines in them on him. He was about to shoot it out or what? Next, agents tried to retrieve the rapper's phone. So ATF goes to the desk where airport police placed Mr. Hayes phone. And the phone was gone. It was not, it was not there. They speak to the airport police who identified the pilot palming the phone and putting the phone in his pocket. The pilot of the private jet. Remember, they took his phone off him because this is the device that they're using to track him, right? They took his phone off him. They put the phone on the table. Bomb. They told him, go ahead and sit over there. It's an airport. There are cameras everywhere. So they went back and reviewed the footage. I'm absolutely sure. I an agent said, I'm absolutely sure. I took his phone off of him and I put the phone right here. Asked him to sit way over there. He never got back up. Somebody moved this phone. Let's go look at the security footage and see where the phone went. On the security footage, they see the pilot of the private jet he just landed in, pick the phone up, put the phone in his pocket, and move out with it. ATF agents approached the pilot and told the pilot, hey, you have the phone. You pick the phone up. Give it to us. The chronology illustrates, or following the timeline, illustrates that Hayes is a serious flight risk said the prosecutor he has the means to do it he's claimed that more than 11 million dollars worth of assets is his he has access to a private plane with a pilot who is willing to fly an unnumbered flight where mr hayes is not included on the flight manifest that's not an accident this is all not an accident. Investigators listened to Hayes' phone calls after he was arrested and they learned that he spent about eight days in Detroit and he was avoiding Atlanta due to a unspecified beef. During the least during at least one of those conversations, the discussion focused on concerns that Hayes would experience some withdrawal symptoms if he got locked up because he is hooked on opioids. Y'all know what that is, right? Them oxys and all that other stuff, benzos. He's hooked on opioids. Who knows? Um, what's that other stuff called? The one that's wrecking, wrecking havoc right now in all communities. Anyways, the boy's on drugs. And at least one of the phone calls, because the feds are listening to his phone calls and playing them in court. And at least one of them phone calls talked about, damn, he didn't want to go in for the six months because his withdrawal symptoms are going to be hell. He had tested positive as recently as that November before for various forms of morphine and codeine. And the prosecutors, morphine and codeine. The fuck you doing on morphine? And, well, everybody is on codeine these days in the entertainment industry, in the rap world especially, but morphine? God damn. 
So the, the hearing ended with Hayes being held in custody while awaiting transfer to Georgia to face new federal charges for failing to surrender. Then, the prison camp. But federal agents are not finished with him yet. According to court hearing on Thursday, the ATF agent was questioned about whether investigators had contacted the rapper's family to determine his whereabouts. He would have reached out to his family and I don't want to get into it further on a record, but there are other criminal matters that are pending that we are investigating and it has to do with his family. Hmm. So 42 Doug's situation could get way worse. Shout out to all the 42 Doug fans. You just had a full rundown of what this man did. How he got into the pickle that he's in right now. And you have a good idea of how much time he is facing. And what this about. Now remember, he got beef in Atlanta. We don't know if people died from this beef. We don't know if he ordered any shots. Called any shots. We don't know if he might be getting a RICO charge. If he is the leader of a gang or criminal organization. I don't know any of that. But all of that is looking possible as well. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Catch you on the next video. Hit that subscribe button. And you already know if it's hot, we're on it. Hot Topics TV. I'm out. Peace.